The CH-47, commonly called the Chinook, is a tandem rotor twin-engine helicopter designed for tactical medium-lift cargo and troop transport. The minimum crew for tactical operations is four, two pilots, one flight engineer, and one crew chief. For more complex missions, such as night vision goggle operations and air assaults, commanders may consider using five crew members, adding one more crew chief. The CH-47 can transport 33 combat-ready troops. In its medical configuration, it can carry 24 litter patients and three medical attendants. As a cargo helicopter, it can carry troops and cargo inside, as well as up to 26,000 pounds of additional equipment and supplies suspended on its cargo hooks. The front and back hooks have a structural capacity of 17,000 pounds each, while the center hook is rated at 26,000 pounds. There are two models of the Chinook used by the United States Army, the CH-47 Delta and the Foxtrot. Nevertheless, for the emergency responder, the controls and switches are similar on both models. The CH-47DF has six standard fuel tanks with a capacity of 1,028 gallons of JT-8 fuel. An extended range fuel system too, with up to three internal tanks containing 800 gallons each, can be fitted inside the cabin, adding up to 2,400 gallons of total fuel capacity. Lift in a Chinook helicopter is produced by a rotor system consisting of two fully articulated counter-rotating rotors. Each rotor has three fiberglass blades. With a 60-foot rotor span on each rotor system, the effective length of a CH-47 with blades turning is approximately 100 feet from the most forward point of the forward rotor to the most rearward point of the aft rotor. Warning, with the flight controls out of neutral, it is possible for the forward rotor blade clearance to dip as low as 4 feet 4 inches. The pilot's compartment is called the cockpit. When the terms right-hand side and left-hand side are used, assume that the speaker is sitting in the cockpit looking forward. Some common controls in the cockpit are the thrust, the cyclic, and the directional pedals. The Auxiliary Power Unit, or APU, is a small turbine engine that provides electrical and hydraulic power for ground operations and in-flight emergencies. The onboard APU is mounted in the aft cabin above the ramp. The APU off-on switch is located on the electrical power panel on the overhead console forward left side, labeled APU. The cabin consists of the cargo and passenger compartments. Normal access to the cabin is through the lowered aft cargo door, or ramp and the cabin door on the right side of the aircraft. The cabin can accommodate up to 33 troops in the high occupancy seating arrangement. With a crew, that's a maximum of 39 personnel. When the aircraft troop capacity is maxed, the troop commander's jump seat can be occupied. The troop commander's seat is a collapsible fold-away seat located in the center companionway. In the litter configuration, the CH-47DF can transport up to 24 litter patients configured in three tiers of four litters along each cargo compartment wall normally occupied by troop seats. The two one-man seats in the aft section of the cargo compartment may remain in place to serve as seats for medical attendants. That completes the orientation of the Chinook. Now, the emergency procedures for the CH-47. When an aircraft mishap occurs, all emergency rescue personnel must be prepared to safely handle the call. These personnel include firefighters, emergency medical technicians, and local law enforcement officers. They must know the proper safety precautions and personal protective measures to successfully rescue the crew, protect the surrounding community, and safeguard our environment. The senior fire officer for this drill decided that 50 feet was sufficient distance from the aircraft to set up a staging area for the wounded. His assessment took into account not only the calm winds, but also the readily accessible roads and landing area for air evacuation. Bystanders and others not directly involved in fighting the fire must be kept away from the immediate area. Inhalation of toxic fumes put off by burning composite materials can cause headaches, burning eyes, vomiting, or even worse. When handling composites, emergency responders must always wear appropriate protective clothing and equipment to avoid possible injury. If the engines of a CH-47 are still running when you, the emergency responder, arrive, you must use extreme caution. 
The main rotor blades can dip as low as four feet in gusty winds or on sloping terrain. In addition, always avoid the front of the Chinook beyond the cockpit due to low rotor clearance. When the emergency responder feels there is sufficient and safe ground clearance, he will proceed to the aircraft. For the CH-47, approach a running aircraft from the rear, keeping the flight engineer and crew chief in view. If approaching from the right side, ensure you maintain a 45 degree angle and always keep the pilot in view. Normal access is through the passenger door on the right side. To open the passenger door, press in the locking button in the center of the handle and it will pop out. Turn the handle up. The door is divided in the center and the bottom section will fall forward, hinging at the bottom. This section of the door is a step, allowing easier access into the cabin. Push the top section all the way up, ensuring the catch is engaged. There are numerous escape and emergency entry areas on the CH-47. The initial rescue team should use the passenger door. This will give quickest access to the cockpit for shutdown. If the door does not open, the window can be pushed in. Grab the cloth pull tab and pull outward. This releases the window, which can then be pushed in. Immediate access to the cockpit is through both cockpit doors. For both the Delta and Foxtrot models, the doors are in the same location. The pilots and co-pilots jettisonable doors are located on each side of the cockpit to provide emergency exits for the cockpit crew. On the CH-47 Delta, each door is a single section door with a sliding and fixed window. The pilots and co-pilots jettisonable door handles are located at the top of each door assembly for jettisoning the door from inside the helicopter. Note that the internal handle is secured in place with a .015 copper wire to prevent inadvertent jettisoning of the door. An external handle is located near the bottom aft of each door assembly for jettisoning the door from outside the helicopter. The jettison door for a CH-47 Foxtrot is slightly different. Each door is a two-section door with a sliding and fixed window. A handle is located at the center of each door assembly for jettisoning the door from inside. The external handle is located near the center of each door assembly for jettisoning the door from outside the aircraft. The left handle turns down, the right handle turns up. These jettisonable doors are not power assisted. If the door does not fall away when the handle is pulled, manually pull the door away from the aircraft. If a door does not immediately pop out, use a screwdriver or other tool to pry it out. A secondary method of access is through the large rear cargo door, commonly referred to as the ramp. The ramp is lowered hydraulically from the inside or outside the aircraft. The ramp's external control is behind the small access door located below the right engine and behind the last window in the fuselage. The ramp is lowered by moving the lever to the rear. If the hydraulic selector is in normal, the ramp will not open. An initial rescue person inside the aircraft can go to the back right side and open the valve. The ramp can then be opened with a ramp control lever. Another way in is the rescue hatch built into the upper ramp door. Pull the tab and the hatch will push in. In severe cases, or if the aircraft is inverted, the door in the center of the floor above the cargo hook can be used to gain access. To open it, depress the locking button and push the door up. Clearly marked windows on each side of the aircraft may be pushed out from the inside by pulling the emergency cord. Cutout areas are clearly identified on the outside of the aircraft fuselage with the words, cut here for rescue. Once inside, the troop commander's jump seat may need to be collapsed in order to gain access to the flight controls and pilots. Do so by pulling the locking lever up. An emergency shutdown is done as follows. One, reach to the overhead control panel and pull the two engine condition levers together, then to the rear or stop position. Shut off the engine by pulling the two fire T handles located on the center instrument panel. Two, pull the battery switch on the electrical panel to the rear. Secondary fuel shutoff valve for both engines and the APU 
are on the rear of the aircraft on the wall below both engines. Move the shutoff levers to the left to stop fuel from flowing to the engine. The APU shutoff, which is located only on the left side of the aircraft, stops fuel from flowing to the APU. The last step is to disconnect the battery. The battery is located in the compartment on the left front side of the aircraft. The battery is under a sheet metal access cover. If the cover is secured, release the screw type fastener and then pull the latch to open the cover. A screwdriver may be necessary to release the lock. Disconnect the battery by rotating the quick disconnect counterclockwise. To extricate the pilot, first disconnect his helmet cord by pulling the sections of the connector apart. Do not remove the pilot's helmet unless absolutely necessary. Next, remove the pilot's seat belt by pulling up on the belt latch. When the latch is pulled, all belts and straps will release simultaneously. Remove each belt and set them aside and out of the way. Ensure the pilot's feet are free from the directional pedal's rough edges or any metal that may have been torn during the crash. Once the pilot's feet are clear, he can be removed and taken to the staging area for medical attention. More working room can be gained by adjusting the pilot's seat and pushing the directional pedals all the way forward. The pilot's and co-pilot's seats are on tracks to permit forward and aft, vertical and reclining position adjustments. Bungee cords in each seat exert an upward force on the seat when it is down or tilted. A fore and aft control lever for horizontal seat adjustment is on the right side of each seat support carriage. When the lever is pulled up, the seat is unlocked and can be moved along the tracks on the forward cabin section floor. When the lever is released, the seat is locked in position horizontally. The total range of horizontal movement is 4 inches in 1 inch increments. A control lever for adjusting the seat reclining position is on the left side of each seat. When this lever is pulled up, the seat is unlocked and can be rotated through a 15 degree tilt range divided into 4 equal increments. The seat, in effect, is pivoted up and down around a horizontal axis. When the lever is released, the seat is locked in the selected tilt position. This lever is not operational when armor plating is installed on the seat. The seat is locked in position vertically. Warning: To protect injury to personnel, do not release either the normal or emergency vertical adjust levers unless someone is sitting in the seat. For the CH-47, vertical seat adjustment is controlled by a lever on the right side of each seat. When this lever is pulled up, the seat is unlocked and can be moved vertically along a track through a range of 5 inches. The range is divided into half-inch increments. When the lever is released, the seat is locked in position vertically. To extricate the flight engineer and or crew chief, emergency responders should gain access either through the passenger door or rear ramp. A key point to remember is to ensure the restraint tether is released, either by the D-ring attached to the Air Warrior vest or by the quick disconnect clip on the tether. All other standard cautions for personnel removal apply. The passenger safety belt has a 2,000 pound capacity. The nylon web safety belt is adjustable and is equipped with a positive grip buckle fastener designed for quick release. The belt is released by lifting the top of the positive grip buckle and pulling the buckle apart. This concludes the CH-47 crash rescue procedures. Points in review are 1. Cockpit doors can be jettisoned, but they are not power assisted. 2. The front rotor blades can droop very close to the ground. 3. Total fuel is 1,028 gallons. 4. 
personnel on board can range from 3 to 39. Knowing how to handle all kinds of emergency situations for every type of aircraft takes many years of practice and training. While this continuous process takes place, crash rescue teams can review each of the scenarios presented in this series. Again, this video can in no way replace hands-on training, but it is a good orientation.